Stone. I hope you guys are doing awesome. I hope you had a wonderful week. I hope school is going well. Um, I know it, it's, you know, it kind of, um, it's a bit unfortunate because, you know, COVID and the whole situation, we're all having to take class 
online, or at least most of us, right? A lot of us. And I know that for some of you guys, you know, it's a lot harder uh, to really concentrate and be involved when you're having to take class and do all this stuff at home online. You know, and same thing for me, I'm taking classes as well and everything's online and, uh, you know, I, I would rather much, you know, prefer to be in class, you know, and see and talk and discuss um, with other people like, you know, face to face. And so, you know, I hope you guys um, that this process is, is going well for you guys, despite um, the, all the things that are going on. Uh, I'm praying for you guys and so are, you know, your small group leaders and the other pastors and everyone here at Kids Rock. Um, so hang in there. And uh, just like how we're praying for you guys, I hope you guys are also praying uh, for yourselves and for one another. So with this month of September, today is the last week, um, the last Sunday rather, and the last week uh, for this month. And, you know, we've been talking about friendship. And when we say friendship, um, what we mean to say when we go deeper is, you know, what it means to form a good healthy relationship with other people, and especially with, you know, other fellow believers, right? Um, and so, you know, this month we've been talking about and we've um, looked at the Bible in, you know, various passages and different areas. You know, we talked about and we looked at David and Jonathan, right? Uh, David and Jonathan were awesome friends and, you know, they had each other's backs, you know, and it's it's like, he, or Jonathan, you know, saves David, right? Make sure he um, is safe because, you know, we all know that Jonathan's father, who's King Saul, you know, he wants to get rid of David and so on and so forth. We also talked about Elijah and despite, you know, Elijah being one of, uh, you know, those great prophets um, in the Old Testament, even Elijah, who, you know, was a prophet and he gave the people of Israelite, God's message, right? God, you know, spoke directly to Elijah and he did miracles through Elijah. And so even someone who's like great, like Elijah, you know, he also felt, you know, lonely or maybe tired, depressed. And he also needed an encouragement and help. And so God encourages Elijah he sends the angel to give Elijah food and water, right? And so it's like physically supporting and helping Elijah. And also giving Elijah someone to encourage and help him and to also learn from him, right? And that was Elisha. And so we looked at all these various passages and examples in the Bible of friendship. What it means to be a friend. What it means to encourage one another, to support one another in Christ as fellow believers. Well, today we want to look at another aspect when it comes to friendship and when it comes to relationship. And this is something that all of you Cornerstone kids have probably experienced already. Uh, because even though you guys are young and you guys are kids and you guys are children, you know, it's just this kind of thing happens quite frequently. And even if it doesn't happen to you, and it doesn't, like, it, like directly, it's not happening to you, you also see it happen around you quite frequently as well. Because the reality is, we're all human, right? None of us are perfect, and even though we can try to be as good and the best that we can be, the thing is, we fall short, right, of that goal. Even though I, I feel like, oh, I know I shouldn't do this, I know this is wrong, or I know I shouldn't get angry, the reality is sometimes, you know, the, our emotions get the better of us. Sometimes we just make bad decisions, bad choices. And so, in that way, in a similar way, when it comes to relationships, even though we might care about someone, we might love that person, etc., the reality is, our relationships aren't going to be perfect. And, you know, when those things happen, um, sometimes we're quick to forgive one another or quick to understand and we 
um, you know, try to resolve, you know, fix those problems as, you know, as well as we can, and we move on. And other times, uh, unfortunately, we just can't fix the problems that are going on, and so it drags on and on and on. And sometimes, you know, you just, you're so angry, maybe you feel so betrayed, or, you know, you just feel like this is what that person did to you is just so um, bad or unthinkable that you might not want to forgive the person, right? For, you know, forget, forget trying to go back to being in a good relationship. You know, you just want to just completely throw that relationship out the window. You're like, you know what? Forget it. I don't, I don't want to deal with it. Um, I just, you know, I'm just going to leave it as it is, just ignore it or whatever. And, you know, there can be many reasons for that, right? Maybe you're so hurt. Uh, maybe it's because of your own pride. You don't want to admit that you were also at fault. You know, it can be so many different reasons. And yet, when it comes to our relationships, the good and the bad, the Bible tells us, right, certain things that we should or should not do. And so, let's look uh, let's take a look in the Bible. And today we're going to look at the book of John in the New Testament, uh, which is one of the four Gospels, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And we're going to look at John, but before we look at the Bible passage, we need to uh, kind of know the story of what was going on before, okay? So, we all know that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. And not only did he just die, he was also resurrected by God. But right before Jesus was crucified and put to death on the cross, there was a incident. There was an incident. Something happened. And as you all know, Jesus had disciples. And his closest disciples, right? We know the 12 disciples, such as, you know, John, James, Thomas, and we also know that there was a man named Peter. Well, today's story is going to be about Jesus and Peter. And the first thing I would like to say is, when Jesus was taken away, and they were, you know, asking Jesus what, like, the things that he said, and they were trying to find um, something that Jesus did that was wrong, so that they can you know, punish Jesus, but of course, Jesus did nothing wrong. Well, during that whole time, Peter, you know, had, you know, quietly, secretly followed where Jesus was taken away, and he was watching, he was seeing what was going on. Well, the thing is, when Jesus was, you know, about to be taken to the, taken away and, you know, put to death, you know, right before that, right before Jesus died on the cross, there were people who recognized Peter, right? And these people were like, wait, hey, I, I think I know you. I've seen your face. Hmm, I, I, I've seen you somewhere before. Where do I, how do I know you? Oh, that's right. Aren't you one of the disciples of that man, Jesus? And guess what Peter said? What do you think he said, right? Jesus is about to be, you know, put to death. And so Peter, you know, he was a disciple of Jesus. So what was he, was Peter brave and courageous and honest? Was he, did he tell those people, yes, I am a follower and disciple of Jesus, right? Is that what Peter said? Well, unfortunately, no. Peter denied knowing Jesus. So he lied to them and he said, no, 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 no. <laughs> you must have mistaken me for someone else. You know, I, I, may, I probably look very similar to that guy, but no, no I, I don't know who that Jesus is. And so Peter lied and denied the truth. And then a second time, someone else asked Peter, hey, aren't you that disciple of that guy, Jesus, who's, you know, about to be, you know, you know, tortured and put to death. And a second time, Peter said, no, I, I don't know who that Jesus is. I, I have nothing to do with him. In fact, I, I don't even know who that guy is, okay? No, no, I don't, I don't know who that is. 
And so a second time, Peter denies knowing Jesus. Even though he was one of the 12 disciples of Jesus. He was one of those disciples who Jesus chose, right? Jesus called Peter and told him to follow him. He was not only one of the closest disciples, but he was a friend. And yet Peter lied and denied ever knowing Jesus. Well, guess what? They say third, the third time's a charm, right? The third time's a charm, right? And guess what? Again, for the third time, someone goes up to Peter and says, Hey, aren't you one of those guys who follow Jesus? Like, aren't you one of his followers or disciples? And this time, Peter got angry. And he like yelled at them and he shouted at them and said, No, I do not know who that guy is. Stop bothering me, okay? How many times must I repeat myself? I have nothing to do with that man named Jesus. Three times Peter denied knowing Jesus. Well, basically, he betrayed Jesus in a way, right? Even though he didn't sell out Jesus or, you know, tell the authorities, oh yeah, this Jesus, he, you guys need to lock him up and take him away. You know, not that kind of betrayal. But he betrayed Jesus in another way, right? Because he basically denied ever having known Jesus or having any kind of relationship with Jesus. There could, be, there could be many reasons for that, right? I mean, one example would be that comes to my mind is maybe Peter was scared. I mean, if I was in Peter's position, I would also be, I think I would also be really, really scared, right, for my life. Because I know Jesus is about to die. And if I say, admit that I'm a follower of Jesus, I might think, well, are they going to, you know, am I also going to die? And so there could be many reasons for why Peter did such a thing. And totally understandable. But the fact remains that Peter turned his back on Jesus. So we know that Peter basically betrays Jesus in that sense. And yet, what happens? And so that's what, what we're going to take a look today. So we know that Peter turned his back on Jesus and betrayed Jesus. But we also know that Jesus dies on the cross and dies for our sins. And God raises Jesus from the dead. You know, and Jesus is victorious. Right? And then what happens is, Jesus appears before his, before his disciples, after he's resurrected. And so, you know, Jesus shows himself to the disciples, and he, you know, the disciples eventually realize, oh, Jesus is back. What he said is true. He died and he rose again. Well, this was the third time that Jesus appeared before his disciples after he was resurrected. And this time, what was going on, right? Peter and a couple other disciples were fishing. And unfortunately for them, they couldn't catch a single fish. Even though Peter was a fisherman, right, that was his occupation before he started following Jesus, he couldn't catch one fish. But Jesus appeared to the disciples and he told them, you know, hey, throw your net on the other side, the right side of the boat. And so they did as they were told and lo and behold, they caught over a hundred fish, right? And at first the disciples didn't realize it was Jesus, but later on they realized it was Jesus. Jesus. And so when they, you know, the disciples came back to shore, they saw that Jesus had prepared breakfast for them. And so they sat with Jesus and they were eating. And here, Jesus says something to Peter. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if I were in Jesus' position, right? If I had a really close friend who I loved and I cared about, and he went and betrayed me, right? He did something really bad and he betrayed me, not once, but three times. 
right? Imagine, imagine if you have this, your, imagine your best best friend. You have a best friend, and you 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 know get into trouble or you're in a bad situation, and your best friend basically says that he or she doesn't know you, right? Imagine your best friend is like, oh no no no, I don't I don't. No, I don't know who this person is. I'm, I'm not their friend. I don't even know who that guy is. Or I don't even know who she is. Like, I, I have nothing to do with them. In fact, I didn't even know that person even existed until now. Right? Imagine your best friend saying something like that. Uh, wouldn't that be terrible? Right? And yet Jesus went through a similar thing. And so if I were in Jesus' position, I'm like, man, what can I say? Like, do I... And in fact... I probably wouldn't even meet that kind of friend ever again, right? Probably. That's the kind of emotional feeling that I would probably feel. And yet Jesus, what does Jesus tell Peter? Well, let's take a look. So take your Bibles and open your Bibles to the book of John. And we're going to look at chapter 21. So please open your Bibles to John chapter 21. We will start in verse 15. After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied. You know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said. You know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. A third time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. And so here we can see that instead of criticizing or, you know, calling out Peter for being a bad friend, for being a betrayer, or, you know, having no faith, or being, you know, weak, or whatever. Whatever it is, that's not what we see Jesus doing. Right? Jesus asks Peter if Peter loves him three times. And Peter says yes. And Jesus tells Peter what he needs to do. And Jesus tells Peter to, you know, follow him. Right? And so we see that even though Peter was not a good friend to Jesus when it really mattered, right? When we think it's like, oh, that's when it really matters. When it gets rough, when it gets tough, when you're in a difficult situation, that's when friends should stand up for one another, right? When everything's going well and fine and everything's good, it's easy to be a friend. But when it gets really difficult, when the situation's terrible and everything's hard and painful, that's when, if you really care about someone, that you should stand up for them, that you should support them, that you should help them. And that's what families are supposed to be, right? And so, but we see that Jesus, despite what had happened, Jesus, he already forgave Peter for what Peter did. In fact, he died on the cross so that all of us, all us sinners, could be forgiven, that we could be saved, so that we could be with God again. And the Bible tells us many, many, many times about forgiveness. And for good reason, right? Because, once again, we're human, and if something, someone does something bad to me, well, guess what? I don't, I'm not going to like that person. In fact, a lot of us want to do something bad back to that person, right? If you hit me, then I'm going to hit you, right? right? If you betray me, I'm going to betray you. That's the kind of world that we live in, right? People think, oh, that's normal. That's how it's supposed to be. If that person does something bad to me, I'm going to return the favor to that person. That's the kind of world we live in, but the Bible tells us differently. The Bible again and again and again tells us to forgive one another. And if we're fellow believers of Jesus Christ, and we, we call ourselves fellow brothers 
and sisters in Christ. If we can't forgive one another, if we can't even forgive our family members or friends or one another, how are we going to forgive other people who we barely know? Right? How are we going to forgive people who we don't really love? Right? So it has to start with the ones who are close to us. We need to start forgiving one another who are close to us and loving those who are close to us so that we can love and forgive others who are not close to us. In the Bible, there's so many verses. But for example, even Jesus, what does Jesus say? And one of the biggest things is this, right? And Jesus says this, but we think, why? Why should I forgive this person if they did something wrong? That's not fair, right? But it's not about... <clears throat> See, the focus, that focus is on what I want. The focus is on me. When the focus is on myself, then we have to talk about, oh, you know, it's not fair because I got hurt and that person did something bad to me. And then we lose sight on what we are called to do by God in the Bible. Because in the Bible, what does Jesus say? Multiple times, right? Jesus says, forgive one another, forgive others, right? Why? Because God forgave you. Not only that, forgive others so that God will forgive you. So ultimately, one of the reasons, there are many reasons, but one of the reasons why we should forgive others is, well, because God forgave us. Even though we're sinners and we deserve to die, God sent his one and only son to die for you and for me. And if we want to be forgiven, we need to forgive others. You guys, we always, at the end of every Sunday, we recite and say the Lord's Prayer. And what's in the Lord's Prayer? It says, we say what? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That basically means, Lord, please, we, Lord, please forgive me, right? As I have forgiven others. Even though other people did something bad to me, right? I forgive them. And so, Lord, please forgive my sins. And so, ultimately, it's for our own good that we should forgive other people. Even though they are the ones, they might have be they might be the ones who did us wrong. Another reason is we are called to forgive one another. Look at Colossians, for example, right? It says, forgive one another to do it, not if you want to, but to forgive others, right? Because out of love. Because you know it is what we're called to do in the Bible. We're sons and daughters of God. We belong to God. We are members of his family. And as his children, we should try every day to be more like him. Okay? All right. Well, let me just pray for you guys. And I'll see you all next week. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for teaching us and showing us and guiding us what it means to be a child of God. Uh, dear Lord, we just realize that our relationships here with other people, it's not going to be perfect. There's going to be ups and there go there's going to be downs, just like a roller coaster. And there might be difficulties, hardships and pains from our own mistakes or mistakes made by other people. Heavenly Father, please help us to be more like you, to love others and to forgive them just like how you forgave us from all our sins. Lord, thank you for forgiving us first and help us to be more like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Doing a new thing, making my heart sing Bringing color to this brand new day It's never been clearer, you draw me nearer You're always with me and you're here right now My song, a melody Your perfect love for me My heart is full of praise
But rescue us from the evil ones. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 